Andrew Bailey, marks out of 10 so far? I don't, I don't want to personalise it. You know, um, I, I've said often and repeatedly that I, I struggle to think of more than five people in the world you said this before, yep. that understand money. And, and Andrew, unfortunately, is not one of them. Jay Powell is not one of them. You know, they're, 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 they're a rare being. And so we, we enter into the... We're in an era of policy errors. And to that point, you know, to that point, I would say to you that the world of economic macro if you will, history changed 25 years ago. And I'd say that markets and policymakers have yet to embrace it. And the change I refer to is the rise and prominence of China, the industrialization yep. of China, but with a closed capital account. Okay, yep. and so as deficit countries, we buy their goods and services. They have amassed an immense surplus of capacity in China et al. But in return, they buy our financial assets. They don't buy our goods and services. And so we're left with this predicament of profound asset price inflation, but disinflation, deflation in the real compensation for the real folk. And the central bankers don't get that. I'm afraid they're compounding it. And it feels like class warfare. Aren't we trying to fix that, though, Hugh? I feel like there is a lot of, hey, good to see you, by the way, that there's a lot of money starting to be put into um, industrialization, infrastructure here in the US, uh, green energy, et cetera. Like, aren't we trying to fix this exact problem? I mean, the, the act you refer to, um, it, the preposterously titled uh, American Fighting Inflation Act, whatever, is a great step in the right direction. But there is a solution. You know, I would suggest that the US government, as a form of flattery, turns around to their Chinese counterparts and says, you know what? It's Hats off to you, it's been a success. You have risen in the last 30 years. China's gone from the GDP of Turkey today yep. uh, to the size of continental Europe. And I would propose the US close its capital account. Now that would not be without consequences, severe and bad consequences. Asset prices would shrink. And guess what, the power brokers who control Washington are Wall Street, and they don't want it. And so we have this profound, grotesque Gini coefficient, which just gets worse. The rich get richer and richer, and asset prices elevate to levels beyond what the means. Be the implication? What will be the implication of effectively building a wall, financial wall, between China and the United States? The implication, Guy, would be that they would be forced to buy our goods and services. The implication would be that their currency would appreciate, that 1.4 billion Chinese citizens would be wealthier vis-a-vis -vis us via their currency. Mm -hmm. yeah. like over, since NAFTA, the Chinese uh, currency has devalued from roughly 6.5 to presently about 7.3, despite the magnificence of everything they've done. That defeats the Since logic NAFTA. of economics. Since NAFTA? So 1994, a right. long time ago. Okay. It's, it's devalued. So Hugh, assuming that's not gonna happen, like we're not gonna put up a firewall uh, for the financial connection that the West has with China. So does that mean it's a structurally higher inflation world and structurally higher asset prices? Like do you, the, the, meaning that then central banks cannot fix that and therefore that sets up how you can make money? Central bankers are certainly um, powerless to fix that. That is something that has to be coordinated and arranged at a kind of head of government level. And to correct you, forgive me, but I'm talking about the kind of bifurcation in our world where we get asset price inflation mm -hmm. and we get this profound collapse in the real compensation of Western households owing to this profound surplus of capacity, if you will, in the Eastern uh, mercantilist nations. Now, my problem is that the Fed in, and, of course, dear Mr. Bailey, don't seem to comprehend that. And so in raising rates, you're, you're targeting wages. The world today needs the genius of a Henry Ford. We need higher wages. And let me tell you why. There are three components to GDP growth. 
population growth, and I'm afraid we're not having enough babies, okay? Yep. Productivity growth, which is really dependent upon investment, and we're not investing because why would you with this, this lake of capacity in the east? And so you're reliant upon debt growth. Now, it is, it's a fragile equilibrium as long as you operate a kind of zero interest rate policy that you make the, the cost of carrying that debt yep. very low. But when we are, let's approximate to four times debt to GDP, and when you raise rates to 5% in the UK, effectively we're at 20%, and we're gonna break things. That's what the market. So what are breaks, what we threw, okay, so markets are telling you that things are gonna break. What, what do you think the market is signaling is going to break next? Well, let me give you a personal anecdote. I, I arrived back in the UK from heaven, from paradise, um, on Sunday, and the, the family home which is leased, yeah, um, we're being evicted. Why are we being evicted? We, 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 we've been paying the bills, um, but the landlord was getting like two, two and a half percent yield, okay? Where's his rate now? Where's his rate resetting to? He's losing money, right? So that, that property is going on the market. Believe me, a hell of a lot of property is going on the market. And so capital prices, asset prices are gonna fall. Secondly, my favorite place where I go for my coffee, my latte, um, and it's, this is an expensive place. This is a $10 latte. It's closing. Why is it closing? Because the landlord is raising the rent. Well, yeah. well, also, Hugh, no yeah. one's going to want to pay 10 bucks for a latte if they can't get the wage increase uh, at the same time. Um, favorite question? If, if things are going to break, what do you do? Are you sitting in gold? Well, listen, the, the problem with... So gold is a, is a defense, yeah? The upside's kind of modest. So gold is capitalized at $13 trillion, okay? And you know, we're in it to win it. You know, we're on Bloomberg, we're looking for fat pitches. Um, so say gold tripled. Gold would be the, the equivalent size of all US stocks. Now, I've lived long and I've lived a crazy life and I've seen some crazy stuff, but I, even I can't conceive of that. So, yeah, maybe, maybe it preserves its value. I come back and, you know, I've, I've been saying to you, the dreaded Bitcoin. Bitcoin's half a trillion dollars, okay? And Bitcoin finds itself in the world of asset allocation within a bucket that we call alternatives, you know, private equity, commercial property, gold, et al. It's a hundred trillion dollar bucket and Bitcoin's half a trillion dollars yeah so it I mean it could triple and it would be what one and a half trillion dollars it would be half the size of apple so i kind of i think yeah i'm mean, kind of greedy I'm, and i'd have some of that uh, we're seeing extraordinary things we're seeing you know crypto being cleaned crypto being eliminated bitcoin is not crypto it's a you know it's yeah. a commodity yeah uh, and we're, we've seen this remarkable development in the last few weeks where you've seen blackrock and fidelity apply for an etf okay um, and it's likely to succeed. These are the ultimate insiders. You can buy Bitcoin today at a 40% discount to the prevailing price by buying gray, uh, the Greystone Trust in the US. It's a closed yep. end fund applying to be an ETF. It will, it will become an ETF. So there's an opportunity. So but, is the risk of not owning Bitcoin too great right now? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and would you, do you just buy, is that a barbell? Do you just buy a little bit of it? I'd buy, I'd buy, I mean, you know, you, yep. can, um, you can buy it. I mean, buy, let, let's, I, we, can do, we can go barbell, we can go into, we can yep. go into the gym, if you wish. Yep, but, but, you want, but you definitely want to have it. Hugh, it's been great to see you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us.